So welcome today. Hello, my name is Inge Donkervoort and I'll be your host for this session. Uh, this presentation is about global learning experience at Duke Kunshan University and will be presented by Louisa Lee. Uh, Louisa Lee is uh, the educational Techno technology specialist for the Center of Teaching and Learning at Duke Kunshan University. Her main job responsibilities include implementing educational technologies and assessing their use within the teaching and learning environment. She contributes in a significant way to the development and delivery of high quality learning experience for DQU, working closely with faculty and staff to explore and adapt learning innovation. Previously, she worked as the instructional designer at Marist College. After returning to her homeland in 2018, she joined Duke Kunshan University and gladly continues to participate in the Open, um, open Aperio community. Please note that all attendees are muted when you're in the session. If you would like to speak or ask a question, you will need to unmute yourself. And if you have any questions for Louisa, enter them in the chat box and she will uh, answer them at the, at the end of her session. The session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel. If you have any problems with video or audio, enter a comment in the chat box. Uh, you can enter a question at any time and uh, uh, Louisa will answer them at the end of the session. Um, Louisa, Louisa, the floor is uh, yours. I'm going to stop share and then you can share your screen. Oh, thank you very much, Inga. Um, I'm very glad to be here and see you participating in my uh, global uh, experience, learning experience um, conversation. So first of all, I'd like to pose a question to everyone uh, because this is uh, about the global learning experience. I hoping to know where you are from. Um, if you don't want to talk, you can type in the chat and uh, I see it's a great representation of the community. I know some of you already. Uh, so Inga is from uh, Netherlands, right? Um, what are other places? Oh, yeah, St. Paul, Durham, cool. Yeah, uh, the USA, the Portland. Oh, fantastic. Um, if you didn't know, uh, Duke Kunshan University is in Kunshan, China. It's about a uh, 15 minutes train ride from Shanghai. Um, many people know about Shanghai. Uh, so it's on the Eastern coast. I'm very glad to present uh, our learning experience with you guys. So I will start sharing. Okay, here we go. All right, so you guys see my slides, okay? All right. Yeah, it's okay, we see it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, I will first give you a quick overview of our university and our current uh, educational technology framework. And then I will talk about how we transition online and some of the issues uh, that have come up and give me some ideas. Um, so as you can see very soon, um, all those ideas are not very organized. <laughs> Uh, I'm here to say. So these are all open to suggestions and I hope that I can leave some time for discussion. Now, um, we are a joint university between uh, three entities, the Duke University, the Wuhan University from China, and also the Kunshan Municipal Government because they loan us the land and the, the buildings, everything. We are fairly small, uh, liberal arts uh, college we recently have the third year uh, coming students in September uh, that would bring our total number of undergraduate students to about 800 so we are fairly small uh, but in the meantime we have a lot of faculties already we have about 85 full-time uh, usually around 20 or 30 visiting faculty from Duke and then we also have graduate students um, and all the graduates were from the 
master programs, not the undergraduates. Yeah, we still only have uh, first year and the second year students. The incoming will be uh, in September. Uh, but interestingly, you can see that we are represented um, by, uh, from, by students from 41 countries. Uh, even though um, almost 70 of them are from China, but we have almost 30% and soon to be 35% from many other countries. And the faculties are represented from almost every continent. And, and then we have uh, many from the US. Uh, all the staff, uh, most of them are from China but we still have a lot of uh, staff members from many other countries. So it's very diverse. As you can see, um, when the coronavirus uh, virus, uh, broke, many of the students and the faculty returned home. Uh, in February, I think in February, the return home creates uh, uh, so many different issues because now we are truly a global university because we are truly spread over the globe, you know, at least the 40 countries. Um, so for our curriculum, it's also very different. We have a unique seven week format. So each session, for example, the spring semester traditionally will be 14, 15 or 16 weeks. Uh, it's breaking into two sessions, seven weeks each. We have in the middle, a mini term, so we can have uh, some sort of uh, very intense uh, mini term one week uh, classes to give students a little bit change. And we also have a very small community, so everyone almost knows everyone, so it's a very tight community. There are a lot of uh, interdisciplinary communication, collaboration, uh, constant uh, hallway talks and we have launch meetings all the time. So we're a tight community and we all try to um, bring innovative ideas in teaching and learning and the research, almost everything. So that creates a very unique scenario at the DKU. It's very personalized, very intense. Uh, both the faculty and the students are very driven. They want to get ahead of their themselves. Um, so at the very beginning, when we try to build up our university, um, Center for Teaching and Learning came up with this starter pack for all the faculty. We borrowed a lot of things from Duke. Uh, and you can see that we have the Duke's learning management system, Sakai, uh, Duke's WordPress um, uh, as an e-portfolio platform and also creating blogs and uh, class projects. We use Warpire to share our videos, uh, even though it's not well used yet, but it's been out there for quite a while. And also we want to introduce PebblePad for signature work, um, but that, that's for the third and the fourth year. After a couple of years, we gradually developed our um, toolkit to include many other things, for example, uh, uh, the learning management system still Sakai. Uh, we added a few other tools for our video collaboration and communication, uh, Zoom, Warfire, WordThread. And due to the coronavirus, we find it's very important to, to keep in touch more, um, uh, uh, more instantly and more, uh, more strongly. So the local, when I say local, I mean Chinese, uh, the Chinese platform is WeChat. It's pervasive, everything. So we use WeChat. The Microsoft Teams is also introduced. And also a couple of faculty picked up the teammates so that they can do uh, peer instruction together. On the other side, you can see the blue, a blue sign here. We have Grayscope, um, Pull Everywhere, and the Turn In for Assessment. And WordPress and the Piazza are still there. Um, the library and the publishers, we use a lot of digital textbooks and the free textbooks. We also uh, expand to Coursera, um, use, uh, introduce the LinkedIn learning for training, 
of softwares, and we also use a box to host the materials. Uh, recently, we also look into proofs or, or hypotheses uh, so that uh, faculty can uh, help the student to uh, engage in social learning uh, or this type of collaborative environment for text-based digital materials. So uh, it's, it's a still expanding and very interestingly, um, none of the faculty seems to be too frustrated. They see this as a new opportunity. I guess that's a, a unique atmosphere that you can only see in a startup company. Uh, well, start up a college like Duke Queensland University. Um, now, uh, during this process, uh, we finished the uh, spring semester. We dealt with this emergency online teaching, and we're now preparing for the fall. Uh, we're thinking to make this transition from emergency uh, atmosphere to this regular flexible teaching mode. Uh, in that sense, we mean that uh, whatever the situation is, our teaching, our uh, teaching plan is adaptable. So it's flexible, it's resilient, and it can uh, deal with anything that's on the way. So uh, we are thinking about this as several guiding principles for choosing the learning technologies. So first of all, everyone agrees that the Sakai will be the launching pad, you know, the home base. So students log into Sakai, they can see everything. Uh, when they're in Sakai, uh, we recommend that the faculty curate the tools for the students. Uh, keep it simple, keep it focused, uh, and uh, analyze your requirements, your learning needs, and pick up a couple of tools that's most crucial to your course and use that. Uh, during the spring semester, we recommend the uh, duo, uh, the Sakai plus Zoom, right? It's because we have to do synchronous meetings. But now we're thinking, you know, you can uh, strategically pick a few more uh, so that you can engage in a better asynchronous and synchronous uh, teaching and learning experience. So in that matter, you need to consider equity and inclusivity. You want to bring students onto the same level. Uh, you have to uh, think about what they have access to and uh, where they will be. It's very, very tricky and complicated because our students and faculty are spread out in so many different countries and there's no telling when and how they will be uh, back on campus. Uh, it's very possible that one class, all the students are on campus and all the faculties are in the US. And in another class, some faculty will be in China, some faculty in the, the Europe maybe, and some students will be in Pakistan, some will be in New Zealand, and many others will be in the US. It's crazy. So you have to think about how you consider equity and how you include everyone in the conversation. You don't discriminate based on their uh, access to technology. You have to uh, find ways, um, uh, both pedagogically and technically, to include everyone. And in the meantime, you want to bring everyone together as a community and provide constant support. When we say support, it doesn't just mean the IT support. Okay, you call IT help desk, you get an answer. But it also means that the faculty need to be aware of the student situation. Uh, you care for them uh, academically and even mentally. You know, you need to know that they have someone there to fall back to. So it, it is very complicated and the whole campus are working so hard over the summer. You know, many faculty don't get paid during the summer, right? But still, um, almost everyone um, is still working really hard, even when they are on vacation. Uh, with these guiding principles, I want to talk to you about a few issues that came up. So I think those might be helpful uh, for us to think about and plan 
uh, our uh, plan our fall semester better, and maybe um, can be some lessons for Sakai uh, or any other learning management system in the future. So for example, first is the time. Uh, we never thought the time would be a problem <laughs> before. So uh, you would think, uh, you know, you have this time zone preference, right? Everyone just go there and set it up. But the problem, first of all, is that in some of the places, Sakai cannot convert the time properly, uh, properly based on the personal preferences of time zone. Okay, uh, on top of that, even though the conversion is correct, and the faculty will say, okay, what would be the close time for the assignment? Um, how do I decide on that? So if I have a student in Netherlands, then I have a student in Hawaii, and another one in China, and five of them in the US. Okay, so I could just say, all right, let's just use Kunshan, the China's time as the baseline. So everything fall back to that, okay? Uh, the, the assignment will be closed at 6 p.m. China time, right? Okay, so theoretically it sounds okay, but the students in the U.S. will say, okay, I'm 12 hours behind. You say 6 p.m., it's 6 a.m. in my time. Am I supposed to uh, keep up all night to finish the article? I have to go to sleep at 12. So I lose six hours. What should I do? So it's unfair, right? So am I punished because I'm in the US so I lose the six hours of time, right? So it's, it's a global learning community. So people are in different places. You really have to consider pedagogically uh, what do you do, right? Uh, I think this is a, uh, 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 I, I read another uh, uh, Stanford article, you know, we still run this type of place-based education. Okay, you have a lo local location, you know, you are based in the US, you are American University, you are based in Europe, you are Netherlands University, okay? All the things are, uh, revolving around that uh, local time. Sometimes you have a branch campus somewhere, okay? You have a um, campus in Italy, okay? That local small campus, they run by itself, okay? They're grouped together. They use their Italian time, the, their time in Rome, okay? They have nothing to do with the people in the U.S., However, now it's the same class, people spread around the globe. How do you consider the time? All right, uh, maybe in the past, uh, you have this campus in different locations, but still you are place-based education. You are not a truly global community. So you are only a truly global community when people around the different time zones work on the same thing, like we are doing now. It's a global community. We all go to uh, my presentation, right? So it's different time zone for you. Is it fair for some people who are in Hawaii? No, probably not. They really cannot attend this one. So think about the implications of time. So do we have to localize our global community, right? So right now, because it's so complicated, our recommendation for the, uh, for the faculty is to set up your time zone to China time. Everyone just set it to the time zone. This, uh, this is the, our constant, okay? And then you figure out the other things for yourself. Some faculty just abandon the deadline for assignments. So they will say, okay, so you just finished by 6 p.m. of your local time. I trust you. Okay, you just submit at your local time, 6 p.m. I accept that because that must be fair for everyone. Okay, so, um, you know, think about those implications. And um, also, by the way, very grateful for long side to fix those time conversion bots in Sakai. So it's a lot better now. Thank you. Uh, don't know where you are, but thank you. 
Um, so next is the mobility. Um, due to this crisis, we suddenly find the mobile phones are much more important than before. For example, many students went home. They don't have their laptop with them, but they carry the phone with them. So when they are home, they cannot study because they only have phone with them. They don't even have their textbook. So if the materials are not mobile friendly, they don't know what to do. Some of our students request the um, administration for help. So we actually ship their laptop back home. We have to pack it up and ship it back home. And it happened to a couple of faculty too. So, um, you know, and also many of them don't have a stable uh, internet connection at home. Uh, but in the meantime, their 4G connection is super. So they cannot use their laptop, but they can use their phone. And th this is just the, the, the reality during this crisis. Um, mobile uh, make people more connected than laptop. So you really have to consider, you know, where does the learning happen? Is this just uh, restricted by laptop? If you don't have a laptop, you cannot learn. Is that the reality or how can we deal with that? Um, so we have seen this lifestyle change uh, because of the crisis and because of mobility. So I will just give you a very simple example. So I read the other day, um, the pickpocket uh, has greatly decreased in China in the past several years. Who eradicated the uh, pickpockets on the streets. Care to guess? Who eradicated the pickpockets on the streets? The mobile phones, because nobody carried cash in their pocket. Okay, so everything is paid on the app on their phone. So pickpockets just cannot make a living on the street. They have to pick up another career. That's just happened. Okay, this is just a trend in China. Uh, not just in China, it's around the world. It must have happened in some other places, right? And then we already implemented 5G in many major cities in China. Uh, but I think the higher education still yet to catch up with 4G. All right, so when I talk about 4G, I will ask you, can you upload video to Sakai in three steps? Can you upload a video to Sakai in three steps to share with your faculty and the students? You cannot do that. Uh, you probably have an app, for example, Wattwire, you have WordThread or have something else. You cannot do that. But with commercial apps, for example, um, um, Douyin, uh, KickTok, I think it's a KickTok, you can do that uh, in three steps very easily, right? You watch, uh, live video broadcasting very easily, three steps. So it's yet to uh, catch up. You know, if you don't have that capability, mobile capability, how can you implement hybrid teaching and learning in the classroom? Uh, you want the smart technology to work in the classroom, you need to catch up with mobile technology. Uh, this one I think is a pretty obvious uh, interoperability. We have so many tools, we want to plug them into Sakai. And students all and the faculty all request this. Whenever they try to adopt a new technology, faculty just say, can you put in Sakai? They don't say that, can you buy it? The first thing they say, can you put in Sakai? So we can easily access it. Uh, uh, we did this with Turnitin recently. We still try to uh, figure it out lots of interesting work they have done. Uh, then recently we have this approval, uh, and some faculty also said a hypothesis. You know, the first thing they say, can you put in Sakai? I wanna use it in the next session. That's the first thing they say. So, uh, and also teams, right? Uh, so all those things, think about it. Um, so uh, you want the user experience to be good. Uh, so you need to really change your role. It's not that uh, we set up the system, you use it. And it's uh, 
we need to adapt to what the users want, you know, what the students want, uh, what the faculty want, what the learning requires. They want uh, simplicity. They want easy navigation. They want a single sign-on, you know, one, uh, one stop for all. So think about it. Luisa? You yes. Have, you have five minutes left. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I will just skip through a few things because these are all uh, some of the major issues. I don't really have an answer to them. <laughs> okay, so for access, privacy, and the security, uh, China is a very unique place. Uh, lots of things are blocked, uh, so we need to implement the VPN. But still think, you know, uh, can people in Europe uh, access a lot of things um, in China, so they probably cannot read anything in Chinese, right? So language also is a barrier. Um, we uh, try to learn from uh, all the countries if possible, even though our English is the primary language, but how can you get access to uh, materials from other countries, uh, which is written in another language? And also collaboration, I um, already mentioned a few things about communication, uh, you know, students uh, uh, with the other students, you need to have instant messaging. So that's why a lot of people like Teams, uh, they want to implement that. Um, and also in the college, you have such a tight communication with your faculty in the hallways, in doing lunch, how can you do that online. You have to figure something out. Uh, it reminds me of the second life. I don't know if you guys remember second life. Uh, maybe it's the time to bring that back to life. Um, so in the future, um, at least recent future in the fall, we have to consider resilient teaching and we consider Sakai still as the launching pad for everything. Uh, we need to keep it open. Uh, we need to uh, make it equitable and scalable, to, accessible to everyone. Uh, we also need to find out how it combines uh, with the face-to-face uh, -face communication and how you think about uh, the resilient uh, teaching uh, that will become flexible and adaptable to many different scenarios. Um, so think about this, uh, what I call human-centered design, not just about administrative rules or location. Okay, so I have uh, some resources for you guys to think about. I, will, uh, I think I already added the link in the discussion forum if you want to access that. I highly recommend some of the things here. So for example, the Stanford report, they think about uh, different ways to run the higher education. So I highly recommend this one. Okay, so I believe there are some questions. I see some chat. Yeah, thank you, uh, Louisa. There are two questions from Neil. Uh, sure. why, why do you use Gradescope instead of the built-in Sakai Gradebook? Oh, the Gradescope, um, Gradescope uh, accepts the scanned uh, handwritten writings. Uh, in some of the subjects, the, for example, math and chemistry, uh, they require students to write down the process on a piece of paper. Then students scan it as a PDF, upload, and the faculty can look at it. Uh, I don't think Sakai can do that very easily. And the Gradescope can um, also uh, um, uh, automatically grade some of the papers that recognize the handwriting. Yeah, then... Uh, uh, we have one minute left. There's another question. Would you want due dates based on local time or of students and for that to be automatic, to be more inclusive? Um, I think that's up to the faculty to discuss. Um, it, that definitely could be one of the options, you know, make it the student's local time. And also, why don't you just make it uh, the day, you know, finish it on Friday. You know, finish on Friday, any time frame during Friday because everyone uh, moves at, at a different pace. If it's a personalized uh, learning, why do you have this cutoff date? Um, 
cutoff time at 6 p.m. So if the students submit on Friday, shouldn't that be good enough? So we have all sorts of interesting discussions about time. Yeah. Okay, right on time. <laughs> <laughs> all Thank right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh -huh. I will stop the recording.